All right, we're here with Mike Wilson to do this last Sparrow interview. So let's start with the basics. Uh, you know, where are you from? How old you are? How long you been tattooing? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm 43 years old. Um, I've been tattooing since I started in 91, but 92 is like the first full year of tattooing. And I worked in Daytona for a little bit at a shop there, Atlantic Tattoo, for like a minute, kind of you know, paid for an apprenticeship type deal and that didn't go too well. But during that first six months of being there, I met a lot of people. Like I, I met Lou in Miami and Eric up here in Jacksonville and got to start to go to a lot of shops and, and, and meet people. Uh, I met J uh, Jackie Gresham in New Orleans through Annette and went and visited there and did a lot of my first tattoos there and then worked for Dina in Orlando for six months or so. And while I was there and I was almost done that first six months, I was supposed to be there about a year. I was always coming up here and visiting Eric and Debbie, and then I'd go to Daytona and then back to Orlando. So that's what I was doing for like six months, just driving around and, and tattooing people at each each place. And then Eric was like, oh, we, uh, you know, like, I thought he was offering me a job and he was, but he didn't have a spot to put me. <laughs> so I put in my notice, and then I show up like, hey, I'm ready. And he's like, uh, no, you're not. So then he sent me he sent me out to San Diego, and I was with Dave Gibson for six months, which was, was, was awesome. You know, learn paint and do flash and tattoo a lot of military, and that, that was a really <clears throat> great thing, you know. Yeah. I really had a good time. And from there... I went down to Lou's in Miami and, and worked there and then traveled with Eric and stuff and got to go to Philly and uh, just just got to travel a lot before I kind of came back here and had this as a home base. So what what year do you think it was that you you started here as a full, full-time tattooer at Inksmith and Rogers? Well, I was in San Diego in 93 and then I was in Miami so maybe 94 and I went to Amsterdam in 94 also for the first time I went was through December for a month and then the next time I went was uh, July like when it was really hot there <laughs> real steamy no AC <laughs> um, before we get into going into detail about those places because there's definitely some we should talk about um, growing up in Daytona uh, you know Typical teenager, like what? What got you into art, and and uh, eventually got you into tattooing? Well, I always drew and always like do you know rather go to art classes than any other classes in school and stuff like that. And I met a lot of people that were good artists and you know, there was airbrush artists at the beach and on the boardwalk. And I had a friend that was an art teacher, and all my art teachers were really you know encouraging and helped me out all the time. And I was good friends with them, so. That helped a lot, and uh, I think... I remember one of the stories you told me, uh, we were talking about a long fucking time ago, was I think it was one of your graphics classes in high school, like drawing like just old skate, like skate ramps and stuff. Yeah. Something to do with Stonehenge Dra down there? Yeah, I, in drafting class, I got to, um, I was working... I used to work at a skate shop and then it closed down and then I wasn't really working anywhere for a little bit and then they started to build a skate park there and my friend Dave Tanner and my friend Jason, they had, you know, they kind of knew the guys, the, the investors yeah. and the guys building it and then slowly as the years went on it ended up being just one guy that, that ran the place. But when it was in the, the stages of being designed and going to meetings, the city hall and planning and all that, we got to draw a lot of proposed <coughs> things that got built. And I got to draw a lot of that stuff in drafting class. And uh, they built the nine bowl that's still there now. And a lot of the other stuff they bulldozed when it changed hands years ago. But it was fun doing that, you know, from going from drawing it to, you know, laying it out and shaping dirt and tamping dirt and tying rebar and trial and concrete and doing all that for something that you yeah. want built. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it as a job, but well, no. <laughs> at the time it was, it was great. You know, I remember watching uh, that Skatopia documentary and just watching Bruce them like Martin. that shit. Just it's like, yeah, he was that. down there all in that time too. A lot of people moved to, 
moved to Daytona when that park got built. Yeah. Is that what, uh, I remember you saying before you went to, you went, you went to art school. At yeah, one point, for or, or, a short time. Yeah, short time. I went what? to, up to SCAD, that's Savannah College of Art and Design, and was there just for a little bit. I met a lot of people that either had graduated or were going to graduate and just were having to work to pay back student loans and were in debt and I wanted to tattoo and I knew that that wasn't going to happen there and yeah. I wanted to do that before I went but it really really made it seem like it made more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I think it always does feel yeah. so bad. When you were up there was that the same time Mike Schwager was up there too? I don't know we never crossed paths at the uh, time but it, it was around that same time period you know. Yeah. But I went into that shop that Jack owned California Tattoo and it was it was having weird hours you know it was open like you know 4 30 in the afternoon on certain days and <laughs> stuff like that but then mike told me he had another job at that time and but that's that was really the only shop up there you know it was, it was still the time where it's like one shop for each yeah. area not for each block it's funny like savannah is you know when people think about savannah it's kind of known for this historic you know like you know ghostly town with you know like antique stores but there's really a fucking huge army base right there too yeah. so it's like if you go a little bit out of the historic area it's like you see the mall and it's like this fucking huge base so it's like perfect for tattoo shops but yeah. i think even to this day there's very very few there yeah not, not i mean not as many as like other larger areas i haven't been there in years yeah. I don't know. um so when you after after that school like what was the what what made you decide you wanted to do tattooing or pursue tattooing from that point? Um, my dad wanted to send me to a jewelry school in New Mexico, this Rio Grande place. And my dad's a jeweler and watch watchmaker. And he wanted to send me to do that. But at the time, I, you know, I wanted to do tattoos. And yeah. that's what I was interested in, you know. So what was the, the place in, in Daytona? The skate park? Or no, the uh, the tattoo shop you started out. It was at. called Atlantic Tattoo. Atlantic tattoo. Okay. It was across from the Last Resort Bar in Harbor Oaks, which is south South Daytona. It's where that chick Eileen Warnos, that uh, yeah. serial killer, she used to pick up guys out of that bar. It was what, across the street from the shop. What time? What what year was it? Like the late eighties, like eighty nine, ninety ninety one area. Ninety one. Yeah. That's back when, you know, MTV had the spring break shit down at HR. Yeah. It was just packed with people. It's not like that anymore. It gets kind of yeah. busy, like, bike week, but not as crazy as it used to be back in the yeah. late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, it was real busy. Because you'd have, uh, February, you'd have race week, like NASCAR race week stuff. And then you'd have first full week of March would be bike week. Yeah. And then overlapping all that is... Uh, college spring break so yeah. some schools were early or later so you'd have a good couple months of just influx of all these people yeah. just hitting the beach and loading up the motels and it was it was like a party all the time down there so after you kind of did the little triangle traveling thing mm -hmm. and you uh so how'd you get eric hooked you up with um with over, scene, at dave's. over at dave's yeah Talk a little about what it was like to work out there with Dave and some of the people you met and the stuff you learned out there with him. It was pretty fun working out there. It was kind of like a, a two-man shop. It was two stations, and then there was another little area for a station. That was mine, and there was a guy, Paul Dresmala, that that was working there on the weekends and some other times. You know, he's he was still in the military. He was, like, retired, retiring, yeah. career military, and he tattooed all through the early years. He got tattooed by Eric in Brunswick, Georgia in the early 80s when he was in, in the Navy. Yeah. And I worked with him and worked with Dave. And uh, just like watching Dave paint flash, the whole entire shop was all hand painted stuff, everything. And everything was a real easy, doable design. You know yeah. what I mean? Everything was just streamlined. And when the guys would come in, they, they actually would pick stuff off the walls, you know? Yeah. And you'd get a lot of medics and corpsmen and a lot of uh, Navy and Marines and straight out boot camp and, and stuff like that. So it was, it was pretty good. You know, you'd have five, six guys come in, everyone gets tattooed. You know, it still had that payday feel, that pay yeah. week feel, you know, to it. And we had on Broadway, um, he was on 7th and Broadway, he was on 7th. And then on Broadway was Tiger Jimmy's and on 5th was Masters. And there was some other 
shops, but those were the closest ones. So you'd always see guys going from shop to shop and probably yeah. shopping and things. And yeah, I it love was, that. It old, was a uh, neat feel. I know? love that old flash that he did. All those, all those girls. It's like people would come in. And, you know, like when that Sailor Jerry thing kind of hit, you know, dudes would be like, oh, I want to get a cool pinup. And I'd be like, check out these pinups, you mm-hmm. know. It was just a little bit different, but it was yeah. way, I, I love doing those. They're so yeah. much fun to That's do. great stuff. Yeah. Um, and his lettering, too. I think he was, yeah. like, the first. No, he, he taught me how to letter, like, laying it all out yeah. and all that. He's, he's awesome at lettering. Yeah, there's so many good, yeah. good ta- I mean, so many good tattooers now, but there's so many good guys that do nice, super nice lettering, like, you know, I think DJ Betts is like mm-hmm. by far one of the best right now. But I remember, you know, even when I first got into it in the, in the early '90s, it was like, you fucking that his lettering was what I would go to. You yeah. know, kind of you could see the progression from that to what it, kind of what it is now. Like people yeah. just building off of that aspect of it. And it it's a real distinctive <clears throat> style. Like when you see it, you're like, oh, it's, you know, like yeah. Dave laid that out, or you know, yeah. Nice. So. uh after that, you spent time in Miami. Who all did you work with down there? When I went, when I went to Miami, I left San Diego and flew to Miami. And uh, Lou had fired a bunch of people, so you got you know it's like a pretty good rotating door of people going in and out. But it, he had just opened a shop in Hialeah with Ken, I think, and uh, it was Emerson had just come back from Hollywood from working at Tattoo Mania and Frank Lee was there from Ohio. Right? He was just, he was out in California at Ken's and I guess once Ken was there, he invited Frank there. So we all worked at that shop and then also worked at the, the 14th Street shop, the South Beach shop across from uh, Club Deuce. Okay. Yeah, so, and I was there, I was there about six months or so, maybe a little longer and uh, I'd work during the day over there at, at the Hialeah shop and then on the weekends I'd do double or fill in over over at 14th Street and that's where it was really busy that's where you had tourists and you had yeah. a lot of people the Hialeah shop was mostly you know people neighborhood people in that area yeah you know so there's a big difference uh, yeah. yeah it seems like there's just I mean even back you know, like reading through magazines back in the day, you know, that was like the shop in Miami. Yeah. But even always, even back then, there was always a bunch of shops yeah. in Miami. And I yeah. think it's just even gotten crazy down there. Nowadays. Yeah. And the shop's so small, too. Yeah. It was crazy to see how small it was and the amount of stuff and the amount of people you could fit in there. <laughs> it always looked busy. You know? Yeah. So then you, you came up here after, that's when you came up here. And yeah, well, from, from there... Eric wanted to go on a road trip, and we went, we drove up, um, I came up to Jacksonville, and then we left here, and we drove up to Fayetteville, North Carolina, Jacksonville, North Carolina, like hit up a bunch of shops and visited people there, um, went to uh, Glen Burnie, Maryland, and saw Tom Beasley, um, went up to Philly, and uh and uh, saw Sonny Tufts, and then went and saw Sailor Eddie, and over in Camp in New Jersey, he was in Runnymede at that time. Is that, that when you got your chest? I right? got the chest eagle like a year later, maybe okay. two years later. Like the next time I went up there, he did a ship on me the first time um, I visited him. Awesome. And then, uh, then we went to Pittsburgh, and then down through West Virginia, and then and then back, and then. Every, I, I was probably here six months out of the year and then traveling six months out of the year, whether it was a convention or going, you know, visiting a shop like going to Philly and going to stay with Eric Perfect yeah. or, you know, working, uh, working Philadelphia Eddie's on, on, um, on 4th. And that's, there was three shops on that street, you know. Like was he crazy. as crazy back then as he is now? Or maybe crazier? About the same. About the same. <laughs> <laughs> We'd meet at the... At the bar on the corner for screwdrivers for breakfast before the shop oh opened. Yeah. Yeah. And did he already have that? Uh, did he already have Cadillac open then, or was it? Oh, Phil, it's Philadelphia, Eddie. Yeah. Um, oh, never mind. Yeah. Wrong person. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, <laughs> no, Eric. Eric had a shop in Mania, and yeah. it was kind of outside the edge of Philly a little yeah. bit, and then. Uh, I used to go work there because Sonny, I'd 
hang out with Sonny, and Sonny Tuss would go over there. I'd go there with him. Yeah. Okay. And then what was uh then that that's when you started working full time at this shop at Ink Smith after that after that trip after you built a station. Okay. Yeah, because the front and that's room, that's this. Is it we can see uh, this over here was this area. This was part of the the, the flash still. When we popped a wall in there and made another station. So and that was, was the back door right there. Um, at the time, or was that or was the back room? No, the now? next one. The next one was. Yeah. yeah. And this and then all this area. Over Got a here. flash rack right here. Right here. Yeah. And then that's where the first station was directly behind Mike. Yeah. Miami. Yeah, it definitely looks different Changed from when I first started working here. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a bike shop before that. They used to build motorcycles in here. <laughs> so uh so who are some of the people that have worked at the shop with you throughout the years that I mean, there's been a lot of people in and out of here, you know, they've all, yeah. you know, stayed quite a while, but there were some, you know, I mean, there was like a time frame when Frank Lee worked here with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you Frank, Frank worked here for a while, you know, um, Frank and a lot of people, it's kind of hard to even, yeah, you know, it's like a blur. <laughs> some for a long time, some for a short time. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Um... But I mean now, with uh, with five shops though, it's it's still you can still have a lot of tattooers here. And Jacksonville's such a big town, you have five different yeah. shops too, and still keep it, you know, where it doesn't affect each other whatsoever. Yeah, it's kind of spread out, and people stay like people on the beach. They don't want to cross yeah. the bridge and go mm -hmm. go on the other side. I mean, it's only five five and a half miles to the other shop. And they look at you like you got you're just crazy. Yeah. I don't want to drive over there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in the beginning, when when you first start, you know, like traveling a lot, you're doing a lot of conventions. What were some of the bigger, or what were some of the conventions that stood out the most for you back then? A Richmond convention, and then uh, there's one in Atlanta um, that a guy Gary Hall, Ink Wizard, he used to put that on, and that's where I met Hank at that one. Okay. And then that's how I got invitation to go work over there in Amsterdam. So, so what's, uh, so tell us about this trip to, Am you were over there a month, right? Yeah, working? yeah. I mean, I've, we, we've had conversations about stories, but that's for a different time. Um, but, you know, me, who, who were some of the people you met over there and worked with over there and um, some of the experiences? Permanent Mark was over there. George was over there. Hollywood Mark was over there. Hank was working there. And, uh, and Michelle, Captain Caveman, he was the apprentice at the time. And I went over there in December. So he's like, oh, come over in the winter. This is really slow and everything. And I book my flight, I get my stuff all ready. I go over there and I just show up. And he didn't tell anyone <laughs> it. I'm coming, I'm, you know, walking the shop. They're all, what, what, you know, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm working. They're all, really? So it was one of those type of deals. But it was, it was a great trip. And then the next time I went was... In, uh, I think it was July, August, it was really hot. And it was just real busy. A lot of, you know, people from everywhere, all over Europe, vacation, Italian yeah. sailors, can't speak, you can't speak with them, they're passing yeah. out, it's hot in there, you know. And it's it was, in one it of those, good time. it's one of those parts of towns where everything's, yeah. you know, where you can get a little bit of everything. Yeah. And, and then the next time up. when I went, it was, um, it's one of those things, a lot of shops have a pretty good revolving door of, you know, the next year the crew's totally different, you know. Yeah. So, Hank had, I went over there that, the next time I went, and it was, it was Hank and Permanent Mark and Charlie Roberts and I, and then Michelle, uh, Captain Caveman. And that, <coughs> that was it for, the, for that time. So every time it was kind of this rotation you know, the guy Wayne Baruki was out there at one point working, you know, so it was, it was kind of neat, you know, you just, you see all these people and you see them at different places a few times a year, you know, yeah. kind of like a convention. You go to a convention, doesn't matter what town it's in, it's usually mostly the same people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Where, uh, what other conventions around that time frame were, were pretty big going on that you were doing? Um... The Atlanta one, then then Hank put on convention in Amsterdam, yeah. and I think that was like 96, 95, 96, 
and then uh, like do Ink Slinger's Ball. That and, was a big uh, one back in the day. Yeah, yeah. That was at the Palladium. And then uh, there was there was a Philly convention that was actually in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Tower that Just works. across the river. Yeah, Just across yeah. the river. So that was pretty good. And then the Miami conventions were good. All, all the, the tattoo tour like the the mm -hmm. JD Crow and Dennis the Fire one, ones were really good. There was the one year they had a tattoo convention in Miami, that was, probably one of the better ones down there. But they only did it one. I think it was. I was at the Eden Rock, and I. It was like 97, maybe yeah, or 98. Yeah, 97 or 98. Yeah, that was that was a good one too. I remember that one. Yeah, I remember that one. But other than that, I mean, there wasn't that much in yeah. Florida for tattoo conventions. The back first there. other convention. than the fucking all women's, the all females convention in Orlando. Dina's convention. Yeah. yeah, I go down there and judge for her every once in a while, and that one's still go down there. She she did it for a long time. Did, do they still do it though? I don't I mean, know. She's kind of thinking of, you know, yeah. every year's like ah, this might be the last. You know, yeah. it just takes a lot to put a convention on and. I mean, right now would be the time. I mean, there's a lot of really good female yeah. tattooers out yeah. there, you know? In Orlando, that's a fun place to go. And I remember, yeah. shit, was it 2014? I mean, you know, 15 years ago, yeah. 16 years ago. when a handful. Know, there was, yeah, there wasn't that many at all. Yeah. The, first, was, the first convention I went to was Meadowlands, New Jersey one, and that was a national one. And uh, I hadn't done, man, I think I hadn't done you know, 20 tattoos or anything. I met Mike Pike there, and he was supposed to get tattooed, and it didn't work out or whatever, and I was drawing and stuff. And he goes, you want to tattoo me? I was like, I don't have any equipment. He goes, I got it all up in my room. <laughs> and I went, and I did one on him, and he's like, all right, I want another one. I did, so like my 21st and 22nd tattoos I did in the room oh, on Mike, awesome. which was awesome, you know. That was a real, you know, encouraging boost you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Like, just jump in. All right. You know? And you still and Mike's have an awesome guy. That portfolio of those tattoos. Yeah, I remember I, seeing it before. I still it have like them in like my first, first portfolio. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing like the, the Winnie Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, and the fucking balloons and shit. Yeah, backwards. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know. <laughs> it was the early nineties. It was like watching that. your back. <laughs> uh, I'd kill to have that shit. Have my first twenty tattoos. Yeah, man. Um, so, uh, how'd you end up, I know you, you're, you're friends with, with a lot of the guys out on the West Coast, like the guys in San Francisco, you spent a lot of time with those guys. How'd you, how'd you, uh, meet those guys and, and end up out there working with them from time to time? Well, I'm, I met them at conventions, you know, I don't remember which one now, you know <laughs> what I mean? But, uh, just meeting them at conventions and going like, I remember I went to a Chicago convention and when I went to that one. That was real early on, that might have been the second, maybe the second or third convention I'd ever been to. Yeah. And uh, I was, I worked out my room and stuff, like I didn't have a booth or anything like that. So I think I met a bunch of people there as well. And then uh, that's when, uh, the first time I went out to San Francisco and worked, I worked at Erno's. And that's when uh, Mandy and Greg calls, and uh, Erno wasn't really in the shop at all at that time, and Sonny Tufts was there, and he was kind of, he was kind of living there too. Yeah. And uh, I got I got to sit in and work there, and that was a lot of fun. And then the next time I came, I I worked at two 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 and got to work with with Eddie, and and Scott and Jeff and Juan was there. I think Jesse Tuesday might have been there at that time. And uh, and uh, also Gary Cosmal was there too, like drawing on perfect parallel lines and geometric stuff on people. That's just insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is that stuff's been done yeah. for so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So, uh, as much as you you probably don't want to hear this though, it's like. That group, we, you know, the people you name and stuff, it's like you and, you know, Scott and those guys in that whole San Francisco scene and all that shit. You guys are kind of labeled as, like, the... When you ask any younger tattooer that's been tattooing, you know, 
15 years or younger, mm-hmm. you guys are like the, the, the one they always look up to. Yeah. I mean, occasionally you get those that say, you know, like, you know, like the Bob Roberts or the Ed Hardys. But yeah. most people in that time frame in their, you know, late, you know, late, early, late 20s, early 30s, they always list, you know, like the whole San Francisco scene. Right. They, they list you and all that stuff. You, how does that make you feel as a tattooer that so many people look up to you in that aspect in this industry? I don't know. It's, it's weird because it's like all that group of people that I named, we'd all look up to the next generation. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're looking up to Eddie and, and Freddie and Guy and, and Ed Hardy and like all these other people that, you know, it's just like the steps, boom, 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 boom. You're always looking, you know, to the next guys that are doing it, that have been doing it, you know, maybe a year or maybe 10 years longer than you. Right. You know, it's always like, well, they're, you know, this far ahead. Or whatever, and that's the, it's motivating. You know what I mean? That's good. Yeah. And then you see guys have been tattooing, you know, three, four years, and you're like, God damn! Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why you're I just tell, killing it. That's why I tell people, you gotta stay on your game because there's somebody right behind you yeah. to take your spot. If not, I mean, as soon as you know, as soon as you step out the light for a hot <laughs> minute, someone else is taking that spot. And I, I tell you what. It, it's, People not, might not agree with me on this. I really don't give a shit if they do or don't. For so long, Chris Kahn was the was the guy like that did the perfect girl tattoos. Right. And then he quit tattooing for a while, and then he kind of would come back here and there, but you just quit seeing his stuff. It was like, he quit yeah. tattooing, he's painting now. Yeah. And the next thing you see, Valerie Vargas is shit. Just and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, Kahn shit's really fucking nice, but there's just something about hers that just kind of takes it, it's just like one step further. Yeah. It's just like, you know, is equally as nice as his, but it's just like certain little tricks that she does that he doesn't yeah. do, and it's just like, fuck. It's like, there's the next person, <laughs> yeah, there's the next sure. line, that's the line, that's how it's going, you know? It's, yeah. Somebody's gonna take your spot if you don't keep your game up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, man, what, when, 91, that's when you started tattooing? I right did my there? first few, but 92, I think, is the first year. How many more yeah. years do you think you got in those hands? I don't know. <laughs> I hope a lot. <laughs> There's no retirement plan in this business, right? Yeah. Oh. No, not much. And and you also, you know, you build machines and stuff too. Yeah. What made you want to get into machine building? I well, remember, well, I kind of remember when you first started, it wasn't like, hey, this is going to be my next venture. I'm going to make a ton of money at this. It was yeah. more of like... Well, I'll, from the beginning, like, I, you know, I had to put a machine together and and use it like that was just part of the whole thing and i was interested in the mechanical part of it as well you know right. like when i was a kid I'd, my dad had me take watches apart and put them back together so i was like well this looks easy i mean life's a little <laughs> more complicated yes you know so that's true watches yeah so the more. like the first uh, i built a liner it was a, a supreme frame made a, a cutback liner out of it you know and then the my shader was a national jonesy kit the you know the just a brass Jonesy kit they were like eighty bucks at the time. Do you still have them? So, no, I don't have that one. No, I wish I did. Yeah, my friend John that worked with me at the time, he he learned to tattoo. He used to draw like all the the punk rock show flyers, and he was a really awesome artist. And he was, I don't know, he might be like six seven years older than me or something. But he learned, so when I was like 16, he was like in his early 20s, and he had he had learned to tattoo from Charlie Bond. And he tattooed for a little bit, and that was just like crazy, like biker kind of stuff going on. So he, he quit and quit tattooing. And when I wanted to learn to tattoo, I talked to him about it, and he's like, ah, whatever, you know. And then once I, I got a spot apprenticing at that shop, I was like, hey, you should start tattooing again and everything. And he, he got back into it, and he's still tattooing now. And, and I think he's tattooing in London. <coughs> and uh, he still has, he, he sent me a picture of some machines I built then that he still has, like the oh, first shit. few years. I'm like, throw them away. <laughs> Sell them on tattoo gear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, I remember, you know, like, shit. What year is it, 2014? Yeah. How long ago was it we used to build machines back in your shed behind the house? It's been, what? Uh, t- it's ten like years years ago. Yeah, like ten, ten years, years ago. Yeah, ten years ago. Like when Cody was here, and yeah. then Angelo would come over, and we'd work on machines and stuff like that. That shit was so much fun. Yeah. 
And then everybody had to get married and have kids. We don't do it as much anymore. All right. <laughs> yeah. I liked it when I had the stuff set up back here. Oh, I know. I had the milling machine yeah. back here and everything, so it was, it was kind of nice. Between tattoos, you could go in the back and and get something started. Do you think you we know? could have that still here? I mean, do you think the Board of Health would give a shit about it? It's the I mean, back it's in room. the back room. It's the back room. Yeah. 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 Oh, they said. Yeah. So, uh, over the years, you know, like when, I guess kind of coming into tattooing the way you did, you know, with Eric being a, a really good mentor and, and, you know, taking you around and, mm -hmm. you know, introducing you to people, like, who are you, like, tat, I mean, you have a lot of cool old tattoos, like, who, who were you getting tattooed by back then? Um, well, Eric, Eric did a poison girl on me, and uh, his wife at the time, Deborah, did, did the tiger on me, and Dave Gibson did that pin up, and, uh, a, a lady I started working with, um, Cindy at Atlantic Tattoo, she did that on me, because I wanted to do, like, black and gray kind of stuff, I like that photorealistic stuff, and Scott Sylvia did this on me, and Guy did that, and uh, he did that, Chris Trevino did that, Jeff Rasher did the top, and Jeff Whitehead did that, so just Sailor Eddie did the chest eagle, oh yeah, yeah. So just kind of collecting stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? Over the years. But but when uh like like <coughs> learning stuff from Eric, it was it was at the time where he would do, you know, it was like Jack Rudy's designs, Malone designs, some Paul Jeffries designs. It was like certain designs that he did a lot of. So he might have done this Reaper fifty times. Right. And he did it every different color combination: purple robe, red robe. Green skull, yellow skull, black and gray skull, like the same design done so many times, and you'd have photos of them all. Yeah. And you could look and go, oh, that really worked. That looks weird. You should do it like this. Oh, put the highlight here. So it was like real broken down to like, oh, you're going to do that design? Oh, you need to use this, this liner, use this round shader, and use this. Or, you know what I mean? Oh, this is where the white goes. So it was really like, there was direction. Yeah. You know? So that, that was what made it awesome. And then you'd have the photo and then, oh, run, you know, your, the film's done. Go to the one hour place and <laughs> yeah. see if any came out, you know? Yeah. So but yeah, it, it was kind of good to have, you know, it was like stock designs, like yeah. designs you'd see. You could go somewhere else and see other shops had that design and other tattooers had done it. And you could see... The difference, you know, it's like hearing a song, you know, whoa, that band really fucking didn't do a good job on that. Yeah. Or you're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of different. Like now stuff's almost, you can get away with whatever. Yeah. You know, then it was like, you could kind of tell what a good tattoo and what was like, you know. I think all rules of tattooing are just gone at this point. Yeah. Everybody just kind of does their own thing and. To most people, it's just like, oh well, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so popular now. You can't really just yeah. You just kind of gotta go with the flow. You know? Yeah. Pinterest, sure. our new flash racks. <laughs> I mean, I can't begin to tell you. I, I don't even remember the last time someone actually walked in was like, oh, I like this really cool old fucking yeah. Spalding flash or anything. And we try to keep cool stuff. Yeah, it's it's rare. So. Yeah. For everybody, if you come in next time. If you look right here, these two sheets of flash, those are original Mike Wilson sheets. You should pick some off of that, and they're from <laughs> 94. God, when did you do those? Yeah, 94, 93, somewhere around there. Really cool Panthers. Really cool everything. 94. 90, the San Diego one's 93, and then when I was here, it was 94. So speaking of flash, yeah. how the fuck... Did you become this panther guy? Like, I mean, you do nice tattoos. Oh, I do black shading. There so. you go. But it was just like all of a sudden it was just like and everybody he, gets black panthers from Mike Wilson. I, I don't know. It was one trip, and uh, I just started. I just started doing them, like at a convention and traveling. It was just like I get black panther. I get black. <laughs> I got this lens right. It just know. worked, you know. I remember the first time I saw it was when we were doing the. The, 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 the early San Jose conventions. Mm. I just remember, I remember there was one convention, I think you did like eight. Yeah. And I mean, right about that thing. time. Yeah, yeah it was, was just good. like, next thing you know, it was just like, I think those people told their friends, I, if you get attached to Michael's and get a Panther head. I think, I think 
it was at the Queen Mary convention, or I mean the Long Beach, you mm -hmm. know, convention. And I did a bunch then, and then probably the next one was was uh, the, the the San Jose one. You do some cool ones. I mean, well, I, I, I mean, you do some nice tattoos. I'm not gonna lie. Well, thank you very much. I think so the you, the la I think the one that really stands out recently is that fucking panther snake thing you put on Instagram. Oh, it's got like scales and stuff like that. Yeah. And I got to do a couple one ones. Pretty of those. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty fucking ridiculous. And it's it's like a thing. It's a simple design, but you want to change it for the better. Yeah. And every time you're like, ah, oh, gotta like figure something out, you know. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. People will be coming in going, uh, let me get a Frankenstein panther head. Yeah. Wait, wait, what? You know, yeah. probably tomorrow now that you said it. <laughs> Dude, you'll never believe what just fucking happened. Someone came in with a fucking Frankenstein panther head. Uh, um, so, it's been going on for about 36 minutes now. So what else are we going to talk about? I don't know. Oh, man. Intermission. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What else can we talk about? Oh, I guess that's it. I guess so. I guess that's it. Thank you very much for all the info. And uh, thanks a lot. There's a lot more stuff we could tell, but it's just we'll just leave it at this. It's more <laughs> of the intrigue. You have to come to Florida and get tattooed and hang out at Inksmith to hear the rest of the stories. That works. Later. <laughs>